four Republican candidates will gather tonight for a primetime debate. It is their first meeting since Donald Trump dominated Super Tuesday. Trump has more than one quarter of the delegates to win the nomination. But Republican leaders are not uniting behind the party's clear front runner. Many are trying harder than ever to stop him. Trump says GOP leaders should see that he's bringing in millions of voters. In a Facebook video, Trump says he can bring people together. In making deals, even if it's big deals with Congress or maybe other countries, it really takes a certain amount of common sense. You have to have personality. You have to size up the other side. Some people are going to be different. When you're dealing with Russia, it may be different than dealing with China. You have different personalities. You have to be able to size them up. You want to make great deals for our country. You have to get people together. Marco Rubio insists Trump is destroying the Republican Party, leading to defeat in November. The Miami Herald endorsed the Florida senator this morning. It called Rubio, quote, the best choice to unite a fractured GOP. This week's Time magazine cover calls Trump a, quote, bully, showman, party crasher, demagogue, and possibly the 45th president of the United States. 2012 Republican nominee Mitt Romney plans to say today that Trump doesn't have the temperament nor the judgment to be president. CBS This Morning has obtained excerpts from a fiery speech Romney plans to make this morning in Utah. He says, quote, Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. He's playing the American public for suckers. He gets a free ride to the White House and all we get is a lousy hat. Trump hit back this morning on Twitter, writing, quote, why did Mitt Romney beg me for my endorsement four years ago? The cracks in the Republican Party go beyond politicians. 60 GOP national security experts signed a scathing open letter opposing Trump. The letter calls Trump's vision of American power and influence, quote, wildly inconsistent and unmoored in principle. He swings from isolationism to military adventurism within the space of one sentence. One of the experts who wrote the letter is Fran Townsend, former Homeland Security Advisor to President George W. Bush. She joins us now. Good morning. Good morning, Charlie. So why are you writing this now? Why didn't you write this uh, six months ago or a year ago when Donald Trump first began uh, this campaign? You know, Charlie, I can't speak for the, the other uh, signatories on the letter. I will say for myself, I mean, I think like most people, uh, you wanted the political process to play out some. Um, and, and frankly, you know, having taught my sons to be polite and to listen to the views of others, um, I, I didn't expect that sort of the rhetoric of Donald Trump would resonate so with so many people. Look, I understand people's anger and frustration. My children don't feel like they have the same opportunity to better themselves that I did uh, when I was growing up. And so there is a very real sense of frustration, but it doesn't just Justify some of the sort of incendiary rhetoric that Trump engages in, and frankly, the bullying. The bottom line is that you say you cannot support him for president because he would be dangerous in the White House. That's right. I mean, look, you can't, we have Arab allies in the Middle East. We disagree with them often on many topics, but we need them in the, in the war on terror against enemies like ISIS and al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. And so when you say things like you're going to exclude all Muslims from the United States, we alienate the very people we need to partner with to win the war on terror and to protect the citizens of the United States. Donald Trump said that months ago. He said it on, and, and he was asked about it on a debate stage. There have been a number of debates. None of the other Republican candidates have been able to convince those voting that that's dangerous. What, how, what difference is a letter going to make? Well, look, it may not make any difference, but, you know, I really do think that people with the background and expertise who've actually, you know, Donald Trump hasn't <coughs> ever had the experience in terms of having to get something done in terms of foreign policy. The people who signed this letter have, and they do understand what it takes. This is not a real estate deal. Um, and so I, I do think that his rhetoric and, and this wild sort of pillar to post sort of foreign policy of his is dangerous to the American people. Okay, Fran, specifically, he says the enemy is cutting off the heads of Christians and drowning them in cages, and yet we are too politically correct to respond in kind. Donald Trump says torture works. Well, I, look, I, 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 is, if he's suggesting that we ought to be beheading people, I don't think there's anybody, Republican or Democrat, who would support such a thing. I mean, it's just ludicrous to me. And, and I don't under, that, this I do not understand. I don't under, and I don't believe that the American people would support a policy 
of beheading because that's what our enemies are doing. Hey, friend, there is a theory that would go, listen, he's saying things that will sort of get him nominated, get him uh, elect, voted in by the, the public, and that he doesn't necessarily mean these things, and he could back off of them. Does that do you give any credence to that theory? You, you know, Soledad, I'm a great believer that the presidents go through a maturing process, and the, and the primary to get the nomination is a hyper-political one. But w what you want to hear are real ideas. I understand that this is the political season. So do our allies around the world. But you also expect that there's going to be an exchange of ideas and debate on the substance as opposed to what's happened, which is name-calling. Um, and it, it's just not helpful. You're suggesting it goes beyond the pale uh, in contrast to everybody else who's ever run for president? That's right, Charlie. And, and I do think that there's a judgment and temperament issue here. Um, and Donald Trump, at least up to now, to Soledad's point, up to now he, is, he has sort of shown himself not to have the judgment and temperament. Can that change? Perhaps. I hope it does. Thanks. But we haven't seen any evidence of that yet. Thanks, friend. Thank Thanks, you, Charlie. Thank you.